Massive respect for Dr. Li Wengliang. There were other heroes like this in China. Yang Zhen Zhang, who provided us with the virus's genetic sequence when China's government didn't want him to, advance the arrival of the vaccine by two to four weeks. This should save many lives. See the pandemic heroes who gave us the gift of time and gift of information. Maybe we'll learn our lesson from this. JK we'll continue buying, manufacturing in China, prop them up to be a complete dominant power in a few decades, then an extremely evil government will be running the world. Shame taking the CCP down isn't a high priority for world stability compared to global warming. Something the headline and comments don't mention, he was an ophthalmologist. This is especially important to me, because I work in a very well-respected, very busy, optical office. I'm definitely not, on the front lines, when it comes to medical care, but a lot of people don't know bilateral conjunctivitis is a sign of COVID. Most people don't know that. This is actually the first unusual thing Dr. Li Wengliang noticed. Every time anyone calls with a red eye, we are in panic mode, and we have to make the choice as to whether or not we see them, or send them directly to urgent care, regardless of how they say they're feeling. In addition to that, at least 20 times a day I am touching something something that directly was just on a patient's face. Some of the things I have to do, means I have to get close enough to a patient where I can actually feel their breath on my hands, even when wearing a mask. In the case of very young or very old patients, sometimes I have to physically place the glasses on their heads for them. I think it's easy for some people to hear it's just an eye doctor, or an optician, but there is an incredible amount of very close quarters face touching. I'm in no way experiencing the fraction of what anyone working in an actual hospital is experiencing, but it's still scary. I get my vaccine Tuesday, and I am so, so happy. I keep crying little tears when I remember that. I cannot wait for this to be over and every little baby step towards having normal life again is one I can't wait to take. The Chinese government officially announced the discover of a novel coronavirus one day after his whistle blowing, there was no cover up. He spread a false message on a WeChat that this was SARS not a novel coronavirus. That was his crime, misinformation in an insecure location, and his punishment was 10-day detention and a small fine, 500 yuan. He didn't actually need to perform the punishment because he apologized for spreading misinformation he supported the CCP and Hong Kong police. Stop smearing with propaganda. He was pro-CCP and not a victim of a cover-up, nor was he some brave whistleblower. You're eating Trump propaganda. Yeah, people who don't know what happened keep acting like he was the hero who could have saved everyone if the CCP listened to him, but if you look at the timelines he was arrested January 6 while WHO had already been notified of the virus in late December. On top of that he was an ophthalmologist rather than any kind of epidemiologist or lung doctor, he was only speculating based on the fact several severe COVID cases showed up at the hospital. The number of people just looking for an excuse to shit over the Chinese government is ridiculous. Meanwhile, the US government has managed to kill over 300k of their own citizens, not to mention preventing the average American from getting any type of monetary relief. But yes, dot the Chinese government is evil and the US is just a giant ball of fluffy goodness. The cognitive dissonance is off the charts. Remember when Trump and the American government censored our doctors too and even raided the home of a statistician in Florida for revealing the truth? Remember how the politicians that told us for months that it's just a flu are the first ones to get the new vaccine? Remember how Fox News and OANN spread misinformation, lies, and conspiracy theories that hindered the response to the virus? Trump, our government, and our news agencies have all been very, China-like, this year. Fuck everyone who tries to bury the truth. True story, at the end of January I had to write a piece on a medical study for my work at a hospital. I chose COVID because I kept hearing about the problems out of China mind you this was weeks before it was a household term in the West. They've been tracking this virus's evolution out of the Middle East since 2010. The last line of the study, paraphrasing here, were really screwed if this thing gets into airborne mammals like bats. This isn't new. It was never a hoax. It didn't even start in Wuhan, and regardless of failures to contain there it was going to spread soon regardless. 
COVID was the thing old scientists were ringing alarm bells about for years, but ignored, just like in all the movies. Shit, it's partly why Obama talked about how underprepared we were for a mass outbreak event before he even left office. People need to grasp this. The reality of it, and that we knew for years it was coming. They need to understand that no one's to blame for its origins, least of all any single nation. The real anger should be pointed at our politicians and the current administration. They sat in this for months. Then hand waved it away for months after. A premier nation that has done worse than any other developed nation on the planet in addressing this problem and today the same people who bear blame just voted not to give you financial assistance. The fuck up here is the GOP lead government who completely shit the bed at their job of either handling this, giving a shit, or let alone taking it seriously. That's it. Your anger needn't be aimed anywhere else, because it would serve about as much purpose at screaming at the sky. Want to be mad? Want to show your anger with the only people who earned it? Remember this moment forever and vote accordingly. Want it to get better? Donate to Georgia runoff races, because the same GOP saying no to financially supporting you today, will continue to do so all next year if they keep the Senate. Stay safe people. I still think about him like once a week, especially considering this virus isn't going anywhere. He had balls of steel, to say what he did. There is no doubt in my mind there were many more doctors who decided to stay quiet out of fear. I still can't believe he succumbed to the virus himself, he looked healthy. I'm not a conspiracist, but I do wonder how legitimate that being his cause of death is. The thing is he didn't intend to shout out to the entire world about a deadly plague, nor did he wrote lengthy public health instructions or papers. All he did was wrote a short post about there is a sketchy thingy on some patients and he only told his colleagues take some extra care which was evidently surveillanced, instantly contained and controlled. Unlike the virus, he was recognized by Chinese government as martyr earlier this year, probably the highest recognition non-political figures can get in China. However, in September the central government held the memorial meeting for COVID-19 sacrifices, and Dr. Li's name simply disappeared. Which, according to my own research, is a violation of the Second and Fourth Act of Law on the Protection of Heroes and Martyrs. I am no hero, in an age without heroes, I just want to be a human. Bei Dao, Chinese poet. Wasn't there satellite footage of hospitals in Wuhan experiencing a surge back in August? More major outlets reported on this. It's first believed it appeared in November and was reported on December 31, 2019. So the CCP was keeping this under wraps for at least two months, possibly even five. When it was reported by this doctor and he told his co-workers the CCP silenced him for spreading misinformation. Fuck China, and major props to Australia for calling them out. They might have not caused the virus but if they had been less concerned with how they look to the rest of the world we might be in a better situation than we are now. I pray for this man to be in every history book of our children in 20 years. Like every other major scientist, epidemiologist and heroes of the crisis. We need to learn from this enormous tragedy and of the posteriority of how country manage this and how bad some of them act during this. I'll remember his name. As we all should. Who would have thought? In classic China fashion everything was fine. Nothing was wrong. There's no virus. Nothing happened. It's hilarious everyone blames Trump for COVID but completely dismissed the real culprit. Sure the US botched its response. But the Chinese censored people like this man and brought the whole world ruined. Never forget why we're in a global pandemic. All because of a dictator called Xi who happens to look like a fat yellow bear that loves honey. The world can't forget a dictatorship allowed the world to fall into chaos just to save face. Rip Dr. Wang Liang. He was one of the first doctors to report on COVID. One thing that irks me as a healthcare worker is that he is wearing the masks wrong never wear the surgical mask under the N95 mask. That is like wearing your underwear over your pants. The N95 mask needs a good seal that is airtight and conforming around the face. The surgical mask ruins that seal. Li Wenlang, Chinese, Li Wien Liang the 12th of October 1986 to the 7th of February 2020, was a Chinese ophthalmologist known for raising awareness of early COVID-19 infections in Wuhan. 
On 30 December 2019, Wuhan CDC issued emergency warnings to local hospitals about a number of mysterious pneumonia cases discovered in the city in the previous week. On the same day, Li, who worked at Wuhan Central Hospital, received an internal diagnostic report of a suspected severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS patient from other doctors which he in turn shared with his friends. He was dubbed a whistleblower when that shared report later circulated publicly despite him requesting confidentiality from those with whom he shared the information. Rumors of a deadly SARS outbreak subsequently spread on Chinese social media platforms, and Wuhan police summoned and admonished him for making false comments on the internet about unconfirmed SARS outbreak. There should be a day of recognition for this great, brave individual every year. Wasn't he censored in an effort to prevent misinformation though? If I remember correctly he was warning of a kind of viral pneumonia, not exactly COVID. And honestly I'd rather have national health departments leading the charge in term of informing the public, it's a lot better for keeping everyone on equal footing and whatnot. My hat goes off to this guy. I would not have gotten the heads up needed to protect my loved ones without him. When U.S. hospitals were handing my family members trash bags instead of PPE and N95 masks, I was able to send them the appropriate equipment. Bulk up my friends. It's going to happen again. Sending my best. I hate to be that guy. But every time I see this picture of him I cannot help but be incredibly frustrated by how he's wearing these masks. Wearing an N95 over any other mask makes the N95 useless. It needs to be fit tested to seal around your skin. You can wear another mask over the N95 if you want to potentially keep it cleaner. This genuinely may have contributed to him catching the virus, because he was not wearing proper PPE. I'm a nurse and I regularly see physicians misuse and miswear PPE and it's really frustrating. They're not protecting themselves or others when they do this. Sorry, but I had to get this off my chest. I never realized this guy was only 33 years old. It's interesting that he, a doctor who worked in a hospital, died of COVID at age 33. There have only been a couple thousand people in the US who have died of COVID below the age of 34 and that's across many millions of cases. And I would think most of those people probably waited way too long to go to the hospital and also had a pre-existing condition. He was an eye doctor, saw some reports from colleagues and started telling everyone SARS is coming back and causing public panic. A respiratory system doctor from his hospital, by the name Zhang Jishan, reported finding about the virus to China's CDC weeks earlier. By the way, Dr. Li Wenlang was a proud member of the CCP and dedicated his life serving his country and its people. Even his last social media posts were ones of hope and encouragement and asking all Chinese people to work together to defeat the virus. If he knows how foreign racists are using his name to attack his country, he most definitely will not be resting in peace. I still remember when I was casually living life and for a moment swiped to the news section of my iPhone. Mystery SARS virus makes move in China. I didn't even click it. I think I faintly said to myself, damn that sucks, and kept scrolling. This was a little before Christmas of last year. Life is a ride. If that is how he was wearing his PPE it's easy to see how he could have gotten COVID. The N95 he's wearing needs to seal to the person's face or the air will go around the mask instead of through the filter material the mask is made of. He's wearing a surgical mask under the N95 which would undoubtedly prevent the N95 mask from sealing properly to his face meaning he was not protected. If you are a high-risk individual or healthcare worker who needs a respirator like an N95 be sure that the mask is properly fitting and sealing to your face. Wearing multiple masks at once or even just having facial hair can easily prevent N95s or other types of respirators from sealing. This is extremely triggering. Ten months ago in the lockdown I stared at my phone 24 to 7 trying to get as much information as I can about COVID and there were thousands of posts asking for help because they have a family member infected and unable to be treated in the hospital. Hospital were filled. Doctors and nurses working extra hours with limited protection. I remember being so relieved when the number in Wuhan went up by 20,000 in one day because that means we finally had enough testing power and resources to take in and treat the accumulated cases. It was such a shocking number for everyone at the time. 
and look where we are at now. Wear a mask. Stay safe. A word of advice for all the people looking at this photo and are thinking that this is the correct way to don a mask, it is not. You should never wear a N95 type mask over a surgical mask as it cannot properly seal to your face, but you can wear a surgical mask over a N95 type mask as the surgical mask is mainly designed to protect you from fluids. He seemed like a good dude, but this seems blown up to me into something more than it was. By the time he was summoned to the local police station China had already notified WHO and was actively working the issue. Isn't it possible the local officials were concerned about a person who has no expertise in this area spreading information that is not coming through official channels? That risks the information being false, which could spark a panic that could lead to flight when lockdown conditions are warranted. Nobody knew for sure at that point how bad this could be. He was given no punishment. He was made to sign a statement committing to not spreading information not necessarily because China evil but because there is concern that false information coming form doctors in the area can cause problems. Ultimately the Chinese Supreme Court exonerated him and regarded his actions as helpful, and they reprimanded the local officials. The truth is a bit more boring than the Hollywood-style narrative that I think a lot of people want to believe. There is no any, make disappear, shit with Dr. Lee, it's just because there is a law that individuals cannot tell others there is a pandemic going on without approved information. Dr. Lee didn't disappear, didn't get banned on social media, didn't stop working after this. I have huge respect for Dr. Lee but some people are just trying to use our hero to put mud on China's face. Remember that Dr. Lee is also a member of CCP so it's certainly against his will. We should also remember Dr. Zhang Jixian who is the first doctor reporting this virus, three days before Dr. Li, to the local health authorities which is the correct move by law. I still wonder how much the CCP's delay played into how the state of affairs unfolded as it is. Was it really that much containable if they had just been truthful at the beginning? And when do we start worrying about disease X? Sure would be unfortunate if we just looked at how fucking horribly we dealt with and are dealing with COVID. Sure would be a shame if we didn't do shit about people like Ian Smith. I wonder how much the US not doing jack fucking shit played into having the same start date for the disease as a place like SK, which is 15x as dense, but still managed far better. The CCP is fucking shit, but pretending there weren't reported cases before 2020, and there wasn't a literal case study in January, a month and a half or so before our first case on the disease is pathetic. Just admit our country fucking sucked at handling it. First COVID case in September 2019. Its news went viral in November 2019. Had Trump not defund CDC in July 2019, those 44 CDC staff in China would not be cut, would uncover COVID before it hits the news, US would travel ban China in October 2019. The world would soon follow. This was the story of SARS-1 in 2003. COVID would not be a global pandemic. My dad would not die from it. My brother's lungs would not be damaged because of it. Mofo Trump. Selfish liar Trump. Authorities showed up at his home, he recorded everything. Said, they, were going to make him disappear. Soon after, he was never heard from again. They tried to cover it up by saying he died of COVID. Almost everything here is wrong, it's actually incredible. He was never arrested, he continued working after signing a document about, spreading false information, and his hospitalization with COVID was very public and with frequent social media updates including pictures. Was he done dirty? Absolutely. But at this point everyone is just making up their own little story. Pretty sure we are on the same page here. Except I did not say he was arrested. He refused them entry. Yes, he was hospitalized. We can agree on that and there were plenty of pictures of him in the hospital. Did he hold information the government wanted hushed? Yes, done dirty, absolutely, he disappeared from his hospital room, not even the nurses knew where he was or where he disappeared to. Not really sure what you are talking about with, everything is wrong? This was World War III and China won. The casualties speak for itself. US, Brazil, India took a major hit. Vaccine found in the UK, the week after another engineered virus variant found in the UK. 
fuck China. Call me a racist but this virus killed millions of Indians and Italians and people all over each country. China did not take any responsibility for it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video. And if you are new, subscribe and click on the bell icon.